If you're around my age or older, firstly, that's rough. Hope the back pain isn't too bad. But more importantly, you'll have a game. Everyone has that one game. The old one that isn't so old that DOSBox can run it smoothly, but isn't so new that it's all patched up via company or community efforts. Maybe it was hardware accelerated in the early days. Maybe it only worked on one operating system and was an unplayable mess on any other. Generally, these games exist around the same time period, 1993 to 1999, and maybe into the early parts of the 21st century. As that dawned, certain titles got left behind, and with each revision of Windows, it became increasingly difficult to run them. Now, there are solutions. You can build a dedicated Windows PC with interchangeable drives, you can hope that a nice company like GOG has somehow got it all working and pay them. Maybe there's a nice group of people who have made a source port. Failing that, you can try the haphazard compatibility modes or specialist fixes online. Or you could just use the latest version of DOSBox Pure. But Lonnie, I hear you shriek in immediate indignation, rushing to the comments section to declare me a loon. DOSBox is for DOS games. It's not designed to play Windows games, you silly man. Idiot is what I'd hypothetically call you back. Certain forks of the DOSBox project can install earlier versions of Windows and play games, but it's a complicated business with no guarantees. Anyways, back to my one game. That would be FIFA 98. FIFA 98 was released in 1997 and was the first FIFA game not for DOS. It's also one of the best football games ever made. It also enjoyed 3D acceleration on selected cards. I could emulate it, but that would require a BIOS and a decent emulator. And the best version I remember playing back in the day was for Windows, and I want that one. So let's give it a go with DOSBox Pure. First thing we do is install RetroArch, a nifty smorgasbord of emulators for various systems with a controller-friendly interface that I hate, which installs the cores. You can do this via Steam these days, or a repository, or download it from its homepage, and it runs on a ridiculous number of systems. There's plenty of documentation on how to install DOSBox Pure's core into RetroArch, including a video on this channel linked here. When you go to the releases section in their GitHub page to download the appropriate zip for the latest release, you'll also want the DirectX releases in the Voodoo driver to install later. With the latest version of Pure's core installed, we now take advantage of its brand new ability. Installing a Windows operating system from an ISO. Thankfully, I happen to have a completely legitimate copy of Windows 98 Second Edition just lying around gathering dust. So clearly I ripped the image using the optical drive this machine totally has. After doing that, I ran the image in DOSBox Pure. It detected the image and asked if I wanted to install the operating system. At this point, it's very important to hit the scroll lock key to enable full keyboard control over the installation. Otherwise, you'll end up with multiple attempts and multiple OS images, and that's not pretty. It was the quickest installation of Windows 98 I've ever performed. You specify your custom hard drive size, and then you're off to the races with the intuitive Microsoft setup. With Windows 98 installed, I booted in and it kicked me out to desktop. Not promising. I then loaded up my entirely legitimate copy of FIFA 98 and told DOSBox Pure to load it using the newly installed OS. It mounted the zip file as a drive inside the Windows 98 operating system. It couldn't be this easy, could it? Well, I hit the executable, and it worked. It even had the Xbox 360 game controller emulating a keyboard, so I could select a match with it. The stadium loaded up, the teams marched out, and it crashed again. This time round, I decided to install DirectX and the Voodoo zip files included on the GitHub. You know, the ones I talked about earlier. I ran them the same way I did with my FIFA installation, and they installed without a hitch. With my Windows installation declaring that it didn't even need the DirectX 7 installer whatsoever. Make sure to carefully follow the installation instructions for the Voodoo driver, and point Windows in its direction. It's not quite as simple as the DirectX install, which was a one-click-and-done deal. 
So now I returned to my FIFA zip and loaded it up in my fancy new Windows installation with much higher resolution. Did it work? 3D FX logo, yeah! It was time to play some footy. No, no it was not. Was I ready to declare this entire experiment a failure? Not quite yet. I was using a ripped version of FIFA 98, rather than mounting the original ISO. A 500 megabyte CD rip was available on archive.org, so I took advantage of that. And just like the glory days of 1998, the download took forever. Then I pointed DOSBox Pure at it, and it happily mounted it on my Windows 98 machine ready to install. This was very impressive, I have to say. So, with the installation done, I proceeded to enjoy FIFA, right? Well, no. Turns out the FIFA 98 image on archive.org is actually World Cup 98, a completely different game. And it didn't work past the menu either, so I abandoned my attempts to make FIFA a thing and instead installed and played a much better game altogether. This worked without a single hitch, and proves what I had already suspected. It wasn't DOSBox Pure in the end that was the problem, it was all the terrible dodgy rips from the internet. If you happen to own a decent copy of your game somewhere in an attic, then there's a good chance that it may work well on DOSBox Pure. Plus it has all those fancy RetroArch features built in because it's a core of RetroArch. At the end of the day, DOSBox Pure is a very interesting way for RetroArch enthusiasts to run 90s Windows games that aren't compatible with Microsoft's more modern OS's and can't run on Linux via Wine. The project will no doubt keep improving and growing, and while the 3DFX and 90s game support is still in its infancy, the fact that it's a thing at all is to be applauded wildly. And there's lots of videos coming out of people enjoying all kinds of things, as a result of Bernhardt Schelling's effort. So well done Bernhardt. I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with next. Links to all of Bernhardt's stuff can be found in the description, and if you've stumbled across this channel by pure coincidence, then I have hundreds of retro videos. Feel free to check them out. And if you like what you see, you can always subscribe.